All right, so it's 10.33, so we might get started. Um, you can see everyone sort of pouring in, which is really good to see. Uh, so today we're doing a Sew Your Own uh, Mask Workshop. Um, so we've got the lovely ladies from Boomerang Bags Karingai with us. Um, and they have been working tirelessly to get these reusable masks out there. So they're normally sewing the bags, but you now we've got them onto the masks. So it's really great to have them here. And we really hope this uh, demonstration will be of help to you. So I will pass on to you guys. Hello, I'm Jen. And I'm Trisha. We are from Karingo Boomerang Bags and we normally make re -shop, uh, reusable shopping bags. But because of the pandemic, we're now making face masks. And today we're going to show you how to make a very simple double-sided face mask. Fantastic. So we're just going to take you through some of the materials that you will need um, to make your mask. Yep. So the first thing is some fabric. Fabric. Um, Two pieces of good quality quilting cotton is recommended. Um, if you can see through it, it's too thin. If you can't see through it, it's too thick. If you can see through it and see shapes, then it's good to go. Um, we picked one with moustaches and just a plain one for the back. What you, else you need is elastic. We have used three mil elastic in white or black. Um, we've got plenty. There's also, you can use four mil or five mil, but the thinner ones are better behind your ears. Mm, there's um, less bulky. Yep. Yeah, a bit more comfy. You need something to cut your fabric, scissors or a rotary cutter, ruler measure, and something to turn your corners. So you need to have a fancy turning tool, or I use a tent peg because it's easy. Anything works. <laughs> Anything works. Pins which is easy, an iron and a sewing machine. Yeah, uh, we also have the template just because we're making quite a lot, it helps um, make sure that they're all the same size. Um, One, I did put the wrong measurements. So it's seven and three quarters and seven and a half, not nine and a half and nine and three quarters. So you may need to cut it down if you've already cut your squares. Yeah. Um, and essential sewing, <laughs> um, piece of equipment is an unpicker. So I guess as a group, we've gone on quite a journey to making masks and deciding on a particular pattern and way of doing it. Um, so we've made quite a few shaped ones, ones. with seams down the front or pleating at the sides. Um, little inserts for putting filter, removable filters in, um, that sort of thing. And we just found and came to the conclusion as a, as a group that making the rectangle pleated ones um, was the most, the easiest to replicate. So each one is the same. Um, one size fits most yeah. as well. These ones we're finding that it fit half of us and not the other half. Yeah. So we couldn't really make them in bulk because, you know, if it's covering someone's eyes, it's not covering someone's nose, it's tricky to try on and mm. give that to someone. Whereas these are, are standard size, there's less waste of fabric because it's just a rectangle and yeah, anyone can make them. And you can sort of adjust the size by um, putting knots in the elastic to make the elastic shorter yep. or just not pulling the pleats out as far um, for a smaller um, structured face. So they were the best option yep. for us. They, two pieces of fabric. Um, again, we tried with uh, different filters, even using chuck swipes. Um, these aren't medical grade masks and we're not pretending that they are. Um, they're just something to pop on when you're going to the shops or can't socially distance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you needed a, med a medical grade mask, um, then you would go and get one. But these are, we're not pretending that these are such, um, but they are um, a the, reusable, better than nothing. Better than mask. disposable. Yeah, better than disposable yeah. for everyday use. 
Um, What's one, I guess the glasses issue has come up quite a lot. Um, neither of us wear glasses. Um, we do have some people in our group who do. And just from just some general feedback, um, people have been really happy with how these have worked um, with wearing glasses and the no fogging and, and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so let's... Give it a go. Let's go. So I'll just flip the camera around and Jen will take up her post um, and we'll talk you through and show you how to make one of these masks. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All right, so. So we've got our two fabrics cut to our thing. The longer way goes Across the face, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because as long as your pattern is going across, you don't want sideways that's masks. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our elastics to seven inches long. Ours are pre-cut, seven inches. Make sure they're even, otherwise you will have wonky mask. We're going to attach our elastics to our fabric first. And to do that, I mark Let's use a Sharpie or you can use a pen or fabric pencil. It's on the inside, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch and just put a dot and three quarters of an inch on each side. Just so you know where to put your thing. They're going to be even, so you'll have your mask. You're going to attach your elastic that way. So we're going to come across to our sewing machine. You can pin this if it's easier, but because the elastic is so thin, it's easy just to hold it. Put your elastic right on the edge so that when you sew it, you're going to get a, a good bit in there so it's not going to pop out. If you do it there, when you sew, turn it through, your elastic will pop. So you just want good attachment on the elastic. All right, come around here. And you're just going to... Um, baste it on forwards, backwards, just so it's in place. Just with a straight stitch. Yep, you don't need an overlooker. Oh, look at that. And make sure your elastic does not twist. And bring it down to the other one. And then you're just going to sew it on. I just use a three eighth of an inch seam allowance. Gives it plenty of room. And the next elastic. Make sure they're on securely. <laughs> I'd love to see everyone's masks after this. You can share them on our Facebook page, the Karinga Boomerang Bags or Council. We'd love to see them. Your elastics are secured. And Jen, are they secured to the inside piece of fabric? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Top okay. Or bottom, doesn't matter as long as they're on the right side of the fabric. Okay. So when you sandwich them, they're on the inside. Yep. So trim your threads. You don't want them coming through. Okay. Next thing is you're going to add your pattern or your other side. Make sure if it is a pattern piece, it's going across. Because if you put it that way, you're going to have sideways prints. Yep. So. I pin them on just so your corners match up.
And then what you're going to do is you're going to sew around the mask, but you're going to leave a gap so that you can turn your mask through. Mm -hmm. You can start at the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Personal choice. Yeah. And give it another three eighths of an inch. Right. And your elastic is sandwiched in between the yes. two pieces of fabric. Otherwise, you're going to have elastic on the wrong side. Yeah. So make sure you backstitch so it doesn't pull out. And then you just work your way around the mask. And when you sew down the elastic side, make sure that the elastic is out of the way. Otherwise, it will get tangled up and then you'll have to unpick and no one likes that. <laughs> Straight across the bottom. This side. Um, remember to leave a gap, so maybe two inches, turn it through, and back stitch. There you go. Unpin it. Make sure you've got all your both sides in, and then you're going to clip your corners, but not too close to your seam, your stitch. You don't want to cut the, the thread. And clipping the corners just makes it a bit, the corner a bit neater and not as bulky. Yes. Okay. And we're going to turn it through. So find your opening and turn it through. And your elastic should be on the outside. And what you want to do is you want to get your corner turner with a trusty scissors or tent peg tent peg <laughs> whatever i like to reuse whatever works so something that doesn't go through the fabric because you don't want to put a hole in it and push out each corner so it's nice and square all four corners Okay, and you should have something that looks like that. And then we're going to iron. The most important part on sewing is okay. ironing. Come so on. we'll take you over to the iron. So. <laughs> we are going to just iron it flat and making sure our where our hole was is the seams are matched up. So you've got your iron on. One thing to remember is don't iron your elastics because they may melt I've, from experience. I've done that many times. And then you have to unpick and put new elastic in so no one wants to do that. So make sure it's a nice square. They should match up, they don't. The next bit is the pleats. Um, when we started doing pleats, there was many choice words said about these pleats and we had one lady turn up, Diane, I think she's on, hi Diane. Um, she came with this amazing way and the swear words turned into tears of joy because it cut out about five minutes trying to fiddle with pleats to try to make them even. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make your pleats even every time. If you have a pattern, make sure it is face down and pointing away from you so that your pleats go the right way when you Turn it through, just turn it right. So the pleats on the final mask face down. Yes, and you don't want them upside down. So what we're going to do is on the side closest to you, you're going to fold it about an inch. And you're going to iron. Hot iron, it's cotton, it can go pretty hot. And then on the other side, you'll fold it down about an inch and a half and give it a good iron. Fold it in half, match the edges. And then when you turn it over, you have three peaks. And all they do is they just simply fold down 
evenly. And with a bit of a shuffle, they should be even. We're going to pin them because it makes it a lot easier. The pleats should not overlap. So if they're doing that, then just shuffle them back so they're just meeting at the edge. Otherwise, you're going to be sewing through too many layers and that's when needles break. So, there we go. And pin the other side. And you should have even pleats. If you've got stripes, it's easy to line the stripes up. And then on the back, I just give it one quick press to press them in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a top stitch the whole way around, which closes your pleats and it also closes the gap where you turned it through. So back over here. And we're just gonna use one eighth of an inch as a top stitch. So if you've got matching thread, um, it looks a lot nicer than using a, a blue or a, something totally different. You don't want it to stand out too much. So back stitch to lock your stitch in. And slowly go around. And then when you go over your plates, just go slowly because you don't want them popping out and needles breaking and if they don't go just shove your fabric. threads and any others that have poked through anywhere. Oops, I missed one there. Unpin it. And you have a mask you can put on and be safe. There you go. That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. So we wash them after we've made them yep. um, and then they're um, distributed around the community. Yep. Um, so I guess we'll go to questions. Yep. I um, think now. Probably a tip is to make sure your fabric's washed before you make a mask, otherwise it will shrink. Cotton does shrink a little bit and you don't want to have it shrinking in odd shapes. Some people will... Um, hot wash it and then put in the dry if they've got one. I don't have a dryer, so I just close line mine. And when my mask is made, I hand wash them just with a bit of soap every day and just let them to air dry and give them an iron and that just puts the pleats back in and that keeps them clean and sanitary. I guess. Yeah, thanks so much guys. That was really great. Um, I'm just going to open up to questions. Um, to everyone who's attending, if you have any questions, could you please put them through the Q&A um, box and we'll start getting those answered. I think we've got one from Connie. Um, Hi. Hi. <laughs> I think uh, she said, are you able to run through making the pleats again? Would you be able to do a yeah, absolutely. demonstration? Uh, um, <clears throat> yep, I can just do it with a bit of fabric if that's easier yeah we'll go back over to i'll just flick the camera again just one two okay. um, all right shades, I'm sorry. so if you got a print it goes very easy to see it that side so it's pointing away from you so when you fold it you're going to fold about an inch and iron it and then an inch and a half this is a bit bigger because it hasn't been seen. And then in half again, so three irons. 
and then when you open it up they just fall down so they're about oh what's that about a centimeter each yeah. pleat and they just match up just so like it's an inch from the bottom inch and a half from the top and then in and half. half yeah and they just fall into place and that's it yeah um, I have put this on our Facebook page. I've done some photos. There is also some YouTube clips on how to do this. Also, if you just search easy pleats, I think, in on mass, face mass, it does come up. People have done this. Um, other people are doing it in quarters, but we found this was the way that it worked best for us. And it took out a lot of time. I mean, you see how easy it... We did it um, before we were trying to shuffle with with the fabric and it just wasn't working and they weren't even and the front would it be even but the back wouldn't yeah, be and, and yeah lopsided um yeah so yeah it was a lifesaver yeah. for us <laughs> and for the fabrics yeah so, yeah cool any other questions yeah so we had one asking about having a mold around the nose is it possible to create like a small pocket to sort of have a bit more of a mold around your nose? Um, I think there are some designs that do have that. Um, you, you can. You, a, a lot of people just do a very simple stitch um, along the top where they can insert a wire. The reason we haven't picked anything is because I think it's a personal choice if you want to wire or not. Um, and we haven't really found anything that works. A lot of people are using pipe cleaners and florists wire, florist wire bread ties, bits of foil. Yeah, from foil trays, that um, sort of thing. So it was tricky for us. So the thing we were worried about was poking out the ends, things that if you put over your nose and the wire comes out, it could injure you. Um, Rusting, rusting, wearing wash. <laughs> Some people make them reusable, um, replaceable, but that's a, a fiddly way to do it. So we just went nah, along with same with the filters. Mm. That whatever you use will break down over time. Cotton lasts. Cotton lasts hot washes. It lasts ironing. Whereas if you're using a plastic type filter or an interfacing, it will break down mm. over time with continuous washing. If you're washing these every day it'll break down. Your clothes don't because you don't wash them every day. Um, mm. So it was, it was suggested to us to use, yeah, we had a few people use nose wires. I've used one um, and I didn't like it. It really pulled the mask too close to my face, which I didn't like. Mm. So um, we went without, but there are patterns out there that have nose wires. I'm sure if you wanted one, you could look it up. Mm. Yeah. Thanks guys. Um, we just had one more come through. Would you be able to tell everyone um, just the size of the fabric in centimetres? Oh, sure. <laughs> <My rule. laughs> uh, centimetres is 19 and a half by, I think it's 19. So 19 and a half by 19 centimetres. I tried a big one, um, but there was, it was huge, like mm. it covered my whole face. And <laughs> <laughs> so we went with the smaller one and people are happy with smaller ones. So yeah. yeah. And seven inches on the elastic seems to be a standard size. I've mm. had one person ask for a bit longer, um, but seven inches, it's too long for me, but if it's Trisha, so. Yeah. And if it's too long, you can always put a knot in it yeah. and make it shorter. Cut it and tie it. And, um, yeah. yeah. So I made mine a bit smaller. Uh, in terms of washing them, um, they should be washed after each use. Yes. Um, so as Jen said, hot wash, um, put it in the dryer, hang it in the sunshine. Um, so just to keep them nice and clean. Because um, if they're dirty, they're not yeah. suit, make, making their purpose. And even though they are reversible, we don't suggest you wear it out to the shops and then flick it around. Wash them between uses because uses, you don't want that those germs against your face, yep. I guess. Um, we keep ours in a little bag. We give them out in just a snap lock bag, which 
kills me every time we give one out, but they need to be clean and not touched. So yeah. Um, yeah, and people just put them back in and bring it home, wash it, and then you're good to go. Mm. Yeah. So I think, yeah, generally we would have two, maybe three per person, um, and that means you can wash it in between uses and um, you've always got one to hand. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this pattern also sizes down quite nicely to a kid's version if you wanted to do that. So that, that's one that I've made for my daughter. Um, so, yeah, just slightly smaller. Um, again, just um, that's another option. Yep. Um, we've just had one more come through. Um, so it does sort of, it's a, around the, um, you know, the scientific proof behind how the washable mask protects us. Did you want to just go over sort of your stance on having the medical grade masks and the reusable masks and all that again? Every mask we give out, I don't have it on now. We put a little bit, a little letter in it that says um, we cannot say these are going to protect you from coronavirus or other airborne viruses. These are just to protect you where you cannot socially distance public transport, duck into the shops, um, supermarkets, walking around Macquarie or St Ives or wherever you go. Um, but as Tricia said before, if you need a medical grade mask, if you're going to a hospital or something. Or to the doctors you or can, you are unwell. Yep, you can purchase them from the chemist. So we're not saying these are the best things. We also went with um, our research, came across a group called Masks for Mates and they're, a, I think they're based in Queensland and they've been making masks since this started for the vulnerable communities, people in nursing homes who don't have access to those medical grade masks, but need something on their face so they can go and see their loved ones. And they've made thousands of these masks and they went through the process of filters, of nose pieces, and they settled on a pattern like this. There's two layers of good quality quilting cotton. Um, and they leave an option for someone to shove a filter in. That, and they've said, that's a personal choice if you want to filter, but they've made thousands and they've gone to Melbourne, they've gone to all over Australia, um, so we went with their recommendations because they've done the research and we thought if they've done it, great, let's go with what they've done. Mm. But yeah, they're not to do open heart surgery, they're to <laughs> protect you when you go pick up the milk. That's what yeah. they're for. Or yeah. go to church or yeah. wherever you need to That's be. Right. Yeah, perfect. Um, one more question just came through. So after each use, um, uh, would it be good to expose the washable mask in the sun for a while? Would that sanitise the mask or is it um, more suitable to just wash it? Uh, if you didn't have time to wash it, you could put it in the sun, but it'd be much better to wash it yeah. first. Um, wash it at night when you get home yeah. and then let them dry. They'll be ready for the morning. Yeah. And if you have to, then you've got that time to pop it out in the sunshine once it's been washed and yeah. um, go from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. rely Thank on you. Sun. No, the sun's great, but yeah, yeah not like <laughs> hot wash. <laughs> yes. um, so I think that was all the questions that had come through. I'll just do a last second call for any last minute questions if anyone wants to give some questions through. Okay, it doesn't look like it. So right on the dot, 11 o'clock, we might wrap up. If you have um, any questions, you can just message us on Facebook and we're happy to help out. Join our Facebook group, Clearing Guy Boomerang Bags. Um, we put up a tally, we've made over 200 and something masks in the last six weeks. Um, yeah, we love it. So, and we, we haven't bought fabric, all our fabric's been donated. It's new, so it's not the stuff we use for the bags, which has been recycled, um, like council banners that we <laughs> chopped up. <laughs> um, so all our masks are new fabric and they have been washed, as we said, and yeah, we love, we love doing this. And thank mm. you everyone for wanting to make a mask and to wear a mask yeah. to keep everyone safe out there. Yeah, thanks so much for your time today, guys. And um, I hope everyone took something really valuable out of this. Thank yeah. you. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks so much.